So in this video, we're going to follow on from the last video and look at doing some calculations with specific heat capacity and the specific heats of latent fusion and uh, specific latent heat of vaporization. So um, we're going to look at a few different scenarios. So we're going to look at a state change, and there are two different ones we'll look at. We'll look at temperature change, and we'll throw in some conversions between different units of mass and different types of energy as well, which would very much be uh, the type of things that could happen in questions. So the first thing I want to do is calculate the thermal energy required to evaporate 20 grams of water from our skin and it gives us the latent heat of vaporization there. So there's two things I want to draw your attention to. The first is that it said evaporate, which means we don't need to supply energy to get it to its boiling point because it can evaporate at any temperature. And the other thing I would draw your attention to is the mass is given to us in 20 grams, but our latent heat of vaporization is given in kilojoules per kilogram. So we're going to have to deal with that as well. So uh, first of all, we're dealing with a state change. So we're going to be using this equation. Um, this is the equation we have to model state changes. And we're also going to need to convert our 20 grams into kilograms. So a lot of you will already know that we would end up dividing it by a thousand. But uh, to show you how that actually works, um, you should know that one kilogram is 1000 grams. So what I'm going to do is rearrange it to make one the subject of this equation. And we'll see why I've done that in a second. So you can see that any time you see a one in a, an equation later on, we can replace it with 10 to the minus three or one over a thousand kilograms per gram. So if you multiply a number by one, that doesn't do anything to it. So when we multiply by this 10 to the minus three kilograms per gram, we haven't changed anything about our expression there. But what it does is it allows us to cancel out the grams, leaving us with just kilograms. So 20 divided by 1000 gives us the mass in kilograms. And when we multiply that by the amount in kilojoules per kilogram, that cancels out the kilograms, leaving us with just kilojoules as our answer. So if you actually type that into your calculator, so 20 divided by 1000 times 2.2. 230 that comes out as 0.0446 kilojoules which we can then um, multiply by a thousand to convert that into joules we get 44.6 joules okay so in there is we've seen a material changing state from liquid to gas and we've seen converting between two units of mass and we actually saw a little bit of converting into energy at the end as well so let's have a look at another example with a solid to liquid state change and maybe some temperature as well so we've got 500 grams of um, ice and it's removed from a freezer at minus 10 degrees Celsius. And we want the minimum thermal energy that must be transferred to completely melt the ice. So melting is the process of turning from solid to liquid at zero degrees of a melting point for water. And we've got the latent heat of fusion of ice in joules per gram. And we've got the specific heat capacity of ice in kilojoules per kilogram per degree centigrade. So um, just to just like I did before, let's flag up a few things. So our specific heat has the unit of kilojoules per kilogram, whereas our mass is in 500. So we're going to need to do a mass conversion as well. But our latent heat effusion is in joules per gram. So we don't need to do a conversion for the state change. So let's do that first. So we've got 500 grams and we've got 334 joules per gram. Our grams cancel out, giving us an answer in joules, which I'm going to divide by a thousand to turn it into kilojoules. That is a, it's a very typical unit we use for these is kilojoules because they're quite big quantities of energy. Now for the thermal energy to cause the temperature change, uh, I'm going to need a mass conversion there. So you can see that's what I've done in here. I've multiplied by 10 to the minus three or times by one over 1000 to go from grams to uh, kilograms. So that's what I've done first. 
And then I've multiplied by kilojoules per kilogram per degree centigrade. So the kilograms cancel out. So when I multiply it by the temperature change in degrees Celsius, that leaves us with kilojoules. And when you're doing a change, it's always the final minus the initial. So the final temperature is zero and it started at minus 10. So it's zero minus minus 10. That gives us an overall thermal energy to change the temperature of 10.54 kilojoules. And when we add those two values together. That tells us the minimum energy required to completely melt the ice, 178 kilojoules there. OK, so we have now seen the changes of state from both solid to liquid and liquid to gas. We've seen changing temperature and we've seen some conversions between masses and energies. So let's put that all together in one final question. So again, we want to calculate the minimum thermal energy to take one kilogram of ice at 10 Kelvin. And notice it's 10 Kelvin, not 10 degrees centigrade. And we want to supply enough thermal energy to boil it to become water vapor. So some key things I want to pick out here. So it says boil it. So we are going to need to get it to 100 degrees centigrade or 373 Kelvin. Uh, we've got a mass in kilograms, um, but then you'll notice we've got some of the things in joules per gram. So we're going to need to do some conversions for the state changes, but we're not going to need to do conversions for the temperature changes because they're already in kilograms there. Um, so let's get started with the state changes. So let's first do the melting from uh, ice into water. Um, so we can see that we've got the latent heat of fusion in joules per gram. So we're going to convert the kilograms into grams, uh, which is the same as times in by a thousand there. And then times by the number of joules per gram gives us a value of 334 kilojoules there. We can do exactly the same thing for the transition from liquid into gas or boiling. Um, again, what changed kilograms into grams and that's already in kilojoules per gram giving us 2230 kilojoules of energy to go from liquid to gas so that gives us a total amount of energy just to change the state of this value here 2565 kilojoules so that's just for changing the state, but we're also going to need to change the temperature because we need to high heat the ice up to zero degrees. And we need to heat the water once the ice is melted up to 100 degrees centigrade. So uh, we've got our value there. So let's first deal with changing the temperature of the ice. So we don't need to convert the mass this time because we've got kilograms and kilograms. So that's fine. Um, our final temperature will be for the ice would be zero degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. So that gives us our energy to heat the ice to zero degrees Celsius. We can do exactly the same thing as well. We can calculate the energy required to heat the water from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, uh, which would be essentially a temperature change of 100 degrees or 100 Kelvin. And again, we can get our thermal energy giving us a total amount of energy to actually just change the temperature. And then finally, we can work out the total energy required to completely make that change. And it's 3,537 kilojoules, which is essentially 3.5 megajoules, again, dividing by a thousand to go from kilojoules into megajoules there. OK, so that rounds off that calculation. And we've seen how we can do each of these different conversions and state changes and temperature changes using the equations we developed in the last video to model the system. And that's the type of thing you'd be expected to be able to do with these equations. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions about what's happened there, please feel free to comment and ask. I'd more than happily clear those up for you. Um, but thank you very much for taking the time to watch.